my first night at camp. Can I join you? We were just about to tell ghost stories. This is the story of the weeping woman. 30 years ago, a young counsellor called Claire came to the camp for her first season. She was very popular and liked by all the children and the other counsellors. One day on the lake there was a terrible accident. A boy's canoe was upturned and he sank to the bottom of the lake. Claire rushed in after him and they were never, ever seen again. And since that night, a ghostly fog covers the lake each night. The rumour was that if you get close to the water's edge, you can hear her sobbing for the boy she couldn't save. Then one night, two boys would dare to paddle out onto the lake. Jeered on by the others, they decided to do it. Slowly they waded in and soon forgot the warnings and started to splash around, laughing as they wet each other. But then the boy's laughter turned into screaming as a figure rose out of the water behind them. Onlookers watched in horror as the boys were pulled deep into the lake, never to return. And even after 30 years, you can still hear the screaming of the drowning boys and the weeping woman who tried to save them. <gasps> That's so creepy. I would never get down to the lake by myself. This is a story about two best friends. They did everything together. Every year they came to this very camp. But this time, everything was different. The east wing had been burnt to the ground just weeks before. Whispers of different reasons for the fire had been working their way around the camp. It was said that two girls had been playing with matches and died in the fire. And the building was out of bounds, so just, of course, had to be explored. The very next night, they walked through the gate together and up to the remains of the door, still set in its stone door frame. The smell of smoke hung in the air and thin clouds of ash were blown in the breeze. But then we realised there was no breeze. Shapes began to form of the clouds of ash and grey hands reached out of the shapes. As they turned to run, screams rose up out of the ashes. Help us, we're burning, they cried. They started to run to the safety of their dorms, but the ash screams and shapes followed them. They managed to run back, slamming the door behind them. Exhausted and scared, the two girls huddled in bed where they eventually fell asleep. The next morning, they decided to talk about what happened and they came to the conclusion their imaginations had run wild. They dressed and decided to go for breakfast. Opening the dormitory door, both of the girls' mouth dropped in a silent scream. There on the door were four large scorch marks. Somebody had been pounding on it. With burning hands. <laughs> oh, these are so good. Gives me the shivers. Around this time, Last year, we... <coughs> two boys? Yes, two boys decided to sneak away after dinner to eat their candy they had hidden in the woods. Uh, the, the food was, was so bad here and you weren't allowed chocolate after dinner. Anyway, they sneaked into the woods. It was very dark. Eventually, they found their chocolate and enjoyed it. Well, they enjoyed the chocolate while well, in the moonlight. A loud crack came from the darkness. Who's there? said one of the boys, but there was no reply. They heard the sound again, but once more there was no answer. A bo one boy clapped loudly 
hoping to hoping to scare whatever it was. But to both their amazement, they heard a clap back from the darkness. It's just an echo, one of the boys said. Clap once if yes, and clap twice if no. Do you live in the woods? One clap came back from the darkness. The boys were starting to get very scared now. Are you a boy? Came the reply. Are you a girl? The boys were, looked at each other, puzzled. Are you human? They waited nervously for an answer that never came. Are you alone? Came their reply. How many of there are you? The boys huddled up, waiting nervously for an answer. Eventually, they got their reply. I don't think I'll sleep tonight. I wonder if they ever came back to camp. Two girls spending their summer at their favorite camp. The sun was shining, they had plenty of fun, swimming in the lake and exploring the woods. However, one week towards the end of their stay, it did nothing but rain. And the girls had played board games, read books, and now they were very, very bored. The main camp area was very large, and it was an excellent place to play a game of hide and seek, a game they loved to play when they were younger. One of them ran off to find a hiding place, while the other began to count to 50. All she could hear was running up the stairs and along the hallway. After she reached 50, she opened her eyes and went to search for her friend. She went into every room. She looked behind the doors, behind the curtains, in the cupboards and under the beds. Finally, she reached the room at the end of the hallway. It was always locked, but she thought she would try the handle anyway. She reached out and grasped the doorknob, turning it slowly and pushing the door open. Much to her surprise, the room was empty, almost. The only item was an old, tall, carved wooden cupboard covered in cobwebs with a slightly open door. The girl ran over laughing. She swung the door open, expecting to see her friend in the cupboard, but it was empty. She leaned in, and as she did, a cold, icy hand reached out and grabbed her wrist. She let out a scream and tried to escape, but the hand pulled her into the cupboard. The girl's friend heard her screams and ran up to see what was happening. The room was empty, apart from an old cupboard with a slightly open door. To this day, neither of them have been found. But on rainy nights, rumour has it that you can hear their footsteps running up and down the corridor. <gasps> I'm never playing hide and seek ever again. What are you doing here in the dark by yourself? Come on, let's go. 